I was told by band members, by band members to do something dramatic, but <laughs> I think I overdid it. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, they are done. Hello. <laughs> Hello. My name is Alistair Changat, and I would like to ask you guys a question. If you're in a band and you only have five minutes to decide, what will your band name be? Oh, oh, okay, you don't need that much time, okay. Um, I would like to share this wise man's quote. He said, had I actually considered this to be a career, I would probably choose something else because it's the stupidest band name in the world. And this, he's the frontman of the biggest Grammy Award winning band, rock band, Dave Grohl, from the Foo Fighters. So I'm in a band called Sada Borneo. Borneo is the third largest island in the world, consisting of three countries, Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, and Malaysia. And right now, we're in the Malaysian side of Borneo, in Kuching, Sarawak. Let's give a round of applause. <clears throat> Sada means sound in the Iban language. Iban is one of the many races in Borneo, famously known as a group of feared warrior race of headhunters. I'm, act I'm actually an Iban too, but don't worry, we don't do headhunting anymore, so you guys here are all safe. Unless you guys don't laugh at my jokes. <laughs> safe. So Sada Borneo, how did we decide on that band name? Back in 2013, we we're actually a group of friends from the same university called University Science Malaysia. And then that year, we decided to perform together for a university event. So during sound check, the MC asked us, what is your band name? Because back then, we just played whatever kind of music that we wanted to play, but we didn't have a band name yet. But our band is fronted by the traditional Borneo lute music instrument, the sape. So after a quick discussion with the MC, a quick brainstorming session, we decided on the band name Sada Borneo. Why? Because it sounded kind of cool. <laughs> and in our head, we just wanted to go back home to go take a shower so that we can freshen up before the show starts. So that decision was made in less than five minutes. The time we took to decide where to go for lunch takes longer than that. <laughs> but yeah, fast forward all the way to 2015, we decided to try out for the biggest reality show in Asia called AXN, Asia's Got Talent, because we got bored of performing mostly in university events. And then by bringing a fusion of modern, traditional, ethnic, and also nature elements, such as like this. <laughs> so fusing this all together, we were lucky to be able to be the only band that went all the way to the semifinals from Malaysia. Here's a fun fact. The song that we played in audition level, it was an original piece. We actually named the piece Sada Borneo. So now you know our band, we love doing anything related to music unless it involves naming them. <laughs> so yes, we're gonna play that song later on so you guys will know if you haven't watched the video yet. But here's a not so fun fact though. During Ages Got Talent, that's when we realized it was more than just a band name. The media and the people around us, they start looking at us as a reference to be the sound of Borneo, which you can't blame them because that's literally what our band name means. <laughs> but initially, we started doing it as something for fun, but it became a responsibility because we felt responsible to keep the legacy of Borneo music alive, but at the same time unworthy, because we're just a group of university students, lack of knowledge, lack of resources to do so. But it was actually a blessing in disguise, because due to the very strong media presence, we were able to perform in all around Malaysia. And do you know what's more interesting than performing for this event? It's actually the people that we meet along the way. <laughs> so. We met a lot of people far more talented and knowledgeable than us. Musicians, fellow musicians, 
traditional instrument music makers, event organizers, people who are experienced in the music and entertainment industry, fellow artists from various uh, artistic fields, who all have the same goal as us to promote the culture of Borneo. So that's when it clicked to us. Since we have the strong media presence, why don't we take that to an advantage? So that's when we decided to work together with them to promote the culture of Borneo in Malaysia. So we did a lot of appearances in television, local radio station, and in 2015, we were invited to perform in the biggest reality show in Malaysia called Academy Fantasia for the opening act during their final concert, as you can see. Then we also did events with event organizers, so we, we were involved, like in Kuching, we were involved with House and Katama to promote the culture. Woo! We, we promote, to promote to the youth, the, to build up their interest, to be involved in Borneo music. And also, one of our members, Halan, the Sapi player, he started the Sapi movement in Malaysia to bring together Sapi players from all around Malaysia, and also in the process to bring Sapi players from our neighboring country, Brunei Darussalam. And then we also work together with visual artists from Sabah, called Pang Rock Sulap, for them to do visuals for our music, so that one day we hope you guys can see the beauty of Borneo from our eyes. So these are the guys. And then we also did appearances in schools, we visited schools, and worked together with non-government organizations promoting, promoting education, such as Teach for Malaysia, so that we can attract the younger generation to follow their dream, to chase their goal, but at the same time, um, staying true to your roots. Because in the end, all this matters when, after you grow up, when you don't have your roots, maybe you'll feel lost, but that was in my personal opinion, you'd be the judge to yourself. And also, we worked together with the university that where we all started, University Science, university Science Malaysia, in 2016. And because of them, we were able to share the culture of Borneo all the way to Sydney, Australia. And, but all of this, does it really matter what we are doing, creating awareness? Does it really make an impact? Maybe, maybe it does. When there are times when we are doubtful of ourselves. But earlier this year, we, in 2017, we actually did a small gig in Kuching because we really love this place so much. And then after the event, there was this one guy. He's actually an exchange student from Japan called Hikaru Yokoyama. And then he actually came to our show and he told us that he was inspired by us. And he actually cycled that night using his bicycle almost an hour just to attend our gig. And that's the guy you can see, the very striking, the most handsome of, compared to all of us. <laughs> And then, he's actually back in Japan, but before he went back, he actually tried to learn, he actually learned to play the sape, and right now he's actually playing sape all the way in Japan to promote our culture. How cool is that? <laughs> so, people like Yoko, they said, uh, you inspired us, but I think it goes both ways, because without the people who are, people like Yoko, people like you guys, I don't think we would keep on doing this because, like I said, it goes both ways. And then, also in 2017, we're really humbled and thankful to God because we were awarded by the Malaysia's Prime Minister's Office to be Icon Negaraku, to be the national icon for promoting Malaysia <laughs> through music. And it's, it's something that I can't really say in words. So I showed you guys a video instead. But it's, oh, I want to cry. <laughs> uh, when you promote a culture, from what we see, culture is actually built in a community. So it's actually not an individual effort. It's not a band effort, because culture is created in a, in a community. So the community is all involved if you want to keep a legacy of a culture alive. So that's why I would like to invite all of you to work together with one another so that you can promote whatever culture that you want to do. And maybe one day we can see 
the culture of Borneo in a global scale. So let's recap to this story. It's actually why I jumped here just now. It was actually also a decision made less than five minutes. <laughs> the band name's decision was made in less than five minutes. In life, we all have decisions we have to make. And after you did that, there's no way to turn it back, but just grab whatever opportunity that you got, get, and make the best out of it. So I think five, I think five minutes is up. So what's your band name? Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.